today I wanted to talk a little bit about productivity tools, specifically iOS productivity tools that can kind of help you keep focus on your work and moving forward. Um, coming down from the holidays and I actually was sick for about a whole week and then on top of that, you know, we've just been having crabby weather. All those things combined, I got really far behind on my work. And when I was sick, um, there really wasn't much I can do, but I kind of sat there with my phone and kind of looked at the tools I was using to kind of keep up on work and seeing what I was using to kind of help me focus on everything. and. I wanted to improve that, so that's kind of what this video is going to be about. It's going to be about the tools and stuff that going into 2018 that I'm looking to use to help me keep moving my work life forward, keep pushing myself in new directions, keep trying out new things. So let's kind of get into it a little bit. So first up are noise apps. And what I mean by noise apps are they could just be just general white noise apps. They could be music. They could be whatever. Um, I've talked about Noisio a lot in the past. Um, I actually did a whole video on it and I'll, I'll put links to everything I talk about in the description below. But um, what's great about Noisio is you can take different sounds. So you can take a river sound with a fire and animals and you can mix those together. And I've talked about it a bunch in the past. And if you're somebody that gets distracted really easily with music, but you need to have some sort of noise, I recommend this app. It's it's a fantastic app that kind of just puts some general noise in the background and keeps you focused on your work. And the next one I want to talk about is Brain.fm. Um, and this is a subscription service. And what's kind of different about this is it's all focused around music, but music that helps you focus. And it's not top 40 music or whatever. It's, it's very... It's very, very focused on what it is. And, and it's a free download, so I highly recommend you guys download it and at least try it out. There's, there's a trial period. I've been using the Focus one. There's a bunch of other stuff. There's like meditation and stuff in there. So if that's something else you guys are interested in, that, that might be worth checking out. But the Focus track alone is what I've been using, and it, it really does. It helps me focus. It's it's absolutely fantastic with the way it works. So um, Brain.fm, it's a subscription service, but from what I've been using it for and for all the work that I've been using, it's worth it. I think it's highly worth it. So check it out. Like I said, it's a free download, so I'll, and links will be in the description below. Moving over to music, um, I've talked about a couple of things in the music category as far as working before. I've talked about how I have a playlist with all the Mouse Effect soundtracks in it. And even if you're not a big video game player or anything like that, the Mass Effect soundtrack, it's kind of weird. It, it's its kind of like that Brain FM thing that I was talking about. It feels like it's all built around focusing. Other things are movie soundtracks that can really help. And when I say movie soundtracks, I don't mean like Star Wars or Lord of the Rings that have those big epic soundtracks that are like super well known and things like that. Those are, those are too much. Um, I mean, we're not taking the one ring to Mordor. The music soundtracks that I've been listening to a lot lately are Blade Runner 2049 and Dunkirk. Um, both those movies have fantastic soundtracks, but the soundtracks really feel like they're built around working. Yeah, check, check those out. Again, they're, they're on Apple Music, so they're free to listen to if you have Apple Music already. The last thing in music are, is mashups and this may, this will probably not be for everybody especially if you can't do spoken word audio while you write or read or something like that whatever it is that you're working on but um, mashups what's kind of nice about them is is they're constantly changing tracks they're changing beats they're they're changing things up so it's always working at a different pace and then if you get one that's always upbeat like the one that i listen to which is called girl talk it moves a little bit faster and faster and faster so you kind of you kind of start to work with the rhythm after a little while so it's 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 a fantastic piece to listen to while you're writing or editing or whatever you're doing no matter what kind of work you do, note taking is important. Um, we all do so many different kind of note taking. Um, there's type notes, handwritten notes, audio notes, uh, mind maps. Um, for me, I found I've used a lot of different apps for all these different categories. For me, I just went back to Bear for my type notes because I enjoy using Markdown. Um, and I'm gonna do a whole video on why I'm going back to Bear, but really it has to do with using Markdown. Um, there's an app called Outlining, which I, I kind of 
test it out for a little while. That's great for building sp just specific outlines. So if all you do is outlines, you should check this app out. Um, Apple Notes is also fantastic if you have to do things with images or links because the drag and drop support is fantastic. There's rich text previews for all those things. So those apps are great for just typed notes. Um, handwritten notes, there's apps like Notability and GoodNote. What I like about those two apps are is you can have specific pieces of paper so that you can make the background look like a piece of lined paper or graph paper. Um, Apple Notes is also fantastic for the feature that allows you to just take the Apple Pencil, tap on the screen and wake the iPad up and you can start writing. Some people really need to take audio notes for lectures or meetings or whatever you're in. The built-in voice memos app is, is perfect. Um, if you want something that has a little more power, you can look at something like Ferrite. Um, that's really meant for recording like podcasts or sp spoken word audio, but for meetings or lectures, it's gonna work great too. If you're a musician, I would recommend checking out Apple's Music Memos app. It's, it's basically like memos, but allows you to put kind of some beats and stuff behind it. I'm not a musician, so it's not really for me, but um, it is kind of impressive. Mind maps have never really been something I've been able to get well, well my mind around. The one app that I've been trying to get myself to use is iThoughts, and it's a fantastic app if you do like mind maps. Just mind maps aren't for me. So if you're somebody that wants to visually lay out their map, especially if you want to use like the Apple Pencil with the mind map, iThoughts is a fantastic app for that. Task managers and calendars are pretty much important for just about anybody. Um, for me, I've been using Todoist for all of last year. It's a fantastic app. It's web-based, so you can do automation with it. I'm gonna talk a little bit more of that, about that in a little bit. Things 3 was just uh, released later, late last year, right, right around the time iOS 11 came out. And it's a fantastic app, especially if you're looking for like a native um, iOS app that, that's really powerful. I definitely recommend checking out Things 3. Um, OmniFocus is another app that's been on the Mac and iOS forever. It's a staple of the Apple community. And um, it, it like uh, Todoist has just moved to a subscription-based model. So it's actually free to download and you get some basic features. So that's one that if you just want to check out and kind of see if it works for you, it's a free download now. So it won't hurt to just download and check it out there. It is subscription-based to get some of the more advanced features. I've also been using an app called Streaks, and what Streaks isn't like a normal task manager. It's more for reminding you to do something every single day. So I have one for drinking a smoothie, for walking a certain amount of steps, taking a photo, remembering to take out the trash, and it bug, it'll bug you every single day. It'll have a badge on your phone, and it'll say, I have five things I need to complete today, and then it'll be there until I try check every single one of those things off. So. If you have like a task that you need to complete every single day, I recommend checking out Streaks. And if really none of those work for you, none of those task managers or calendars work for you, think about just carrying a notepad and a pen around with you. You get, get something like a, a moleskin notebook, something nice that looks good and put it in your back pocket and go around you know, with that. I know a lot of people that just prefer pen and paper. It just works really well for them. So um, it's okay if a digital solution doesn't work for you. A pen and paper is a perfect, perfect alternative. Email is one of those things that can get a little tricky. I kind of have a rule that I only want to look at my email once a day and I don't always follow it. Sometimes I go more, sometimes I don't look at it at all, but I try and at least look at it just once a day. Uh, the app I've been using is called Spark, and Spark is basically built around the ability to quickly archive, uh, mail, mark as read, or even snooze email so you can make it come back a couple days later. It'll leave your inbox entirely, you won't see it, and then in a couple days it'll come back. Um, I, I like Spark a lot. I think the iPad Pro design, the 12.9 the inch iPad Pro design, it's kind of lacking, there's a lot of empty space, so I'd, I kind of like to see them take more advantage of that empty space for the iPad design at least. Um, another app that I've used in the past is Airmail, and Airmail is a fantastic app. It has every email feature in, of every email client that I've ever seen that I can think of inside the app for iOS. It's a great app. It's just a little buggy uh, when it comes to using exchange email. Um, for my day job, I have to use an exchange email address. If you have to use one, I probably wouldn't recommend Airmail because um, it's a little buggy when it comes to using exchange. Um, 
But if you use Gmail or something like that, it worked fine with my Gmail account. And like I said, it has every email feature that you can possibly imagine. Like you go into those settings and it just, it goes on forever. It's, it's a crazy powerful email application. The other thing when it comes to email that I've been looking into a service called SaneBox. And what SaneBox does is you have all your email go through it and it filters your email. So it'll filter out newsletters, it'll filter out spam, it'll, it, and you can blacklist people. So if you have somebody that's constantly just sending you email after email and you just don't want it anymore, you can blacklist it, you can blacklist keywords, all sorts of really cool things. So um, I've been looking into that service. I haven't pulled the trigger on it, but I think that might be something I do in 2018 along with probably setting up my own email domain and things like that, so. In 2017, automation was a huge thing for me. Um, I really kind of went crazy when it came to automation. I'm a one-man shop here doing all these videos, so I wanted to automate as much as possible so I could save time for making more videos. So I did all sorts of different things. I created some do timers that um, gave me a work and break set. So I'd work for 45 minutes, then I'd take a break for 10 minutes, walk around, go outside, get something to eat, just just kind of enough to, to get up, stand around, walk around, kind of stretch out, and then keep moving. And then I dove really deep into the workflow app last year as well. I did all sorts of different things. I created workflows for, you know, basically putting a bunch of tasks in my to do as calendar so I could see where I am in a in a setup of a video and I created a workflow for sharing videos to Twitter uh, to, I have two Twitter accounts and then it would create a blog post I have one for archiving all the video and footage from a vi uh, from a video project I also used IFTTT a lot build things with my Amazon Echo so I could create grocery lists and add tasks without even having to touch my phone these were all really cool things, and honestly, I'm looking to do more of that in 2018. I wanna make my life a lot easier so I can focus on just making these videos. One last thing, and I just wanna give one little last bonus tip. When you're blocked, whether if it's creatively or you're working and you're just blocked, you can't just move forward, grab a notepad, a physical notepad and a pen, and just go sit down someplace away from your phone, away from your iPad, whatever, and just write, write what's ever on your mind. And I guarantee your block will go away. You, you will write something down that sparks a new idea for a new project, a new series, or whatever you do. Something will be sparked there and it'll be all good. So that's kind of my focus for 2018. It's kind of to really focus on myself and my work and basically anything that's slowing me down, fix it. Get it out of the way because 2018 is about the year of making a bunch of videos, growing the channel, and I don't have time for anything that's kind of slowing me down. So it's all about getting things more productive and more videos made. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you guys so much. Have an awesome day. If you like what I'm doing with the channel, like this video, subscribe if you aren't already. Thank you very much.